Do you use Google Translate? Well, you might want to be careful, because it loves stereotypes. Why are women beautiful and men intelligent? This is the University of the Netherlands. Let's have a look at this tweet that went viral in 2021. In this tweet, we see translations from Hungarian into English. Now, Hungarian is a gender neutral language, which means that it doesn't have gendered pronouns. So Google automatically chose the gender for us when translating into English. Do you notice anything? There seems to be a certain bias in these examples. Apparently, someone beautiful is female, someone clever, male. A woman should do the dishes, while a man builds. A woman cleans, cooks, raises children, and a man does research, teaches, and makes money. A man is the professor, and a woman the assistant. Google Translate uses AI or artificial intelligence to translate, which means that it's a computer and not a human translator. We would thus assume it's more objective and neutral than we are. So how come a computer can be this biased? Well, in certain translation contexts, a computer is left to decide upon the gender of the people that are mentioned. How we define gender in society, which is a non-binary social construct, differs from how the term gender is used in language. So let's start by talking a little bit more about that. For language, gender comes into play in different ways, depending on the language in question. Many languages, for instance, assign a so-called grammatical gender to all nouns. This can be male or female. Think of le or la in French, for example. But there can also be three genders. For instance, der, die, and das in German. And other languages even have more than three genders. Swahili, for example, has more than 16 noun classes. And since linguists sometimes use the term grammatical gender and noun class interchangeably, Swahili can be considered a language with no less than 16 genders. Grammatical gender is furthermore something arbitrary, meaning it differs across languages. The sun is feminine in German, but masculine in Spanish, while the moon, on the other hand, is masculine in German and feminine in Spanish. These linguistic genders, however, do not correspond to the more common interpretation or definition of gender. Of course, as a social construct, it isn't as simple as either male or female. It is something that exists along a continuum. Now, aside from the grammatical gender, natural gender is also often marked in languages. With the term natural gender, Linguists traditionally refer to the biological sex of reference, but we should extend this to the preferred gender of reference. So, for example, when you're referring to someone who prefers the female gender, you would use the female pronouns, like she and her. This natural gender differs from grammatical gender, because it is not arbitrary, as it refers to the actual gender of or preferences of a referent. Lastly, social gender plays a role in language and can sometimes find its way into the vocabulary of a language. The German word Krankenschwester, which means nurse, literally has the word sister in it, although men can be nurses too, of course. And similarly, in French, the female form of president, which is présidente, was until 2018 used to refer to the wife of a president, rather than the female president. Languages differ with respect to gender. Some have grammatical genders and others don't. So some will require you to explicitly mark gender in sentences, while others don't. 
The English sentence, I'm happy, can be used for all genders. While in French, there is a female and a male version. Je suis heureuse, female. Je suis heureux, male. Until 1200, English also had grammatical gender, but it has disappeared nowadays. In general, aside from the pronouns she and he, English has barely any grammatical gender markers left. Nowadays, even the usage of words like actress or waitress is not recommended anymore, since English is working towards a more gender neutral language. Languages like French, Spanish and German, on the other hand, do make a distinction in gender. And this can create difficulties for translations. Take the sentence, I'm intelligent. In English, this could be male or female. But how should you translate the sentence into French? You would basically need to know the gender of the speaker. Now, how would Google Translate handle the translation of sentences that are gender neutral in, for instance, English into a language where a gender marker is needed? Apparently, someone beautiful or someone intelligent has to be a man. But as soon as someone is beautiful but not clever, the translation system decided it is more likely a woman. It even copies gender stereotypes, as in that a pink toy is for a girl and a blue toy for a boy. Now, to understand why machines, or actually the AI behind them, show these kind of biases, we need to look at where the information comes from. Tools like Google Translate make use of artificial intelligence algorithms to translate sentences. The AI tool is trained with loads and loads of information, which we refer to as big data. For machine translation, for example, that data would consist of billions of parallel sentences, for instance, from English to French. The data used to train the machines, to teach it how to translate sentences, is, however, not necessarily representative for our society. First of all, we often see that there is simply more data for men. So the algorithm will be trained more on male data, resulting in male biased outcomes. Aside from that, all the biases that are consciously or unconsciously communicated in these training sentences, which are the biases present in our society, will also be picked up by the machine. And where people can correct for biases, an AI system often overgeneralizes what it has observed during training. The second part of the problem is related to the way we encode meaning in these systems. When women are mentioned in texts, it's often in a context of being pretty or sexy, highlighting a stereotypical image of women, but also of men. In this word web, some of the adjectives that are the closest to man or woman are visualized. First of all, far more words are associated with men, no less than 76%. And from the remaining words, the ones that are closer to woman, 50% are beauty-related terms. So according to the word embeddings, men are cocky, decent, crafty, brilliant, clever, and humble, while women are described as sassy, sexy, tasteful, attractive, and gorgeous. The word web also illustrates once more, the side effects of an overrepresentation of male data. The word web for man is larger and includes more words than the word web for woman. Now, translation tools give meaning to words by relying on this idea of distributional semantics. That is the idea that you can know a word by the company it keeps. And generally, this is a very good idea. The word fire will often appear in a context of words such as warmth, wood, cozy, burn. And the idea of encoding meaning like this 
really advanced the field of automatic translations. But it also has a side effect. The words often associated with women or men are now encoded in the meaning of the word women and men itself, which means that part of the meaning of the word woman will now include being pretty, sexy human beings that maybe aren't too intelligent, while men are now by default tough, strong and cocky. Now, why is this an issue? Well, first of all, we would want to get rid of these biases in translations to simply improve automatic translation systems, since sometimes this leads to translation errors. But aside from that, biases in translation can also have real-life consequences. Let's say a company starts looking for nurses, starting from an English keyword nurse. If the program then looks for nurses in French and Spanish resumes by automatically translating the word nurse into the female variant in Spanish or French, we'd have a serious problem, as this would remove all the male applicants from the equation. Furthermore, language might also influence the way we think. If we see more and more biased input, it will reinforce stereotypical ideas that most of us are hopefully trying to fight. And then last but not least, technology should really be a force for inclusion rather than a source of additional biases. So what can we actually do about this? Well, first of all, we can make people aware of the problem. Make people think about the data that they're collecting and what they will use it for. Is it only for men? Then it's of course fine to only use male data. But if you want it to work for everyone, then everyone should be included in the data that you're using for training these algorithms. One of the things I personally work on is the integration of additional features, such as the information on the gender of the speaker, for instance. If we know the gender of the speaker, we can incorporate that piece of information so that the machine can produce the right translation. We could also use such a technique to generate multiple options for different genders in order to be more inclusive. Now, another solution that researchers work on is searching for the part of the machine translation system that is responsible for gender. Once you've identified the part that is responsible for gender, you could try to switch that part on or off in order to influence or adapt the gender in the translations. We started this lecture with the question, why are women beautiful and men intelligent? In the translation examples, we saw that automatic translation systems such as Google Translate can be biased especially when translating from a language without grammatical gender, like English, to a language with grammatical gender, such as French. The bias and stereotypes we observe in the output of automatic translation systems have multiple sources. Misrepresentations in the data, for instance, too much male data and too little female data, and the way we give meaning to words by looking at the surrounding words. Other researchers and I are working towards solutions so that hopefully one day machine translation will be more inclusive and less biased. Thank you for listening.